Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to today's card video. Today I'm going to be using uh, a new set by Altenew called Shadow Play. I absolutely love this set. It's got some really cute stamps. It's got these two shadows with the bicycle and the tree and also the word sunshine. It's got some great sentiments. I'm going to be doing some watercolor. So I've got a Ranger Broad Tip water brush as well as a thinner tip Stampin' Up! Aqua Painter. And then I've got some Strathmore watercolor paper. So I'm going to start off by taking my tree and I'm going to ink it up with some uh, sepia ink. This is pigment ink by Versafine. And because it's pigment ink, it's going to allow me to clear emboss it and that'll help my watercolor stay in the lines. So when I heat this to set it, I also heat the back to help with the warping of the paper. Now I'm going to pull out my peerless watercolor and this is how I store them um, in this, these plastic sleeves uh, folder. And I'll have a link in the YouTube description if you're on YouTube or on the blog um, that uh, will take you to a video on how I organize this and how to use these watercolors. But uh, I've got a swatch for each color that I've created and I've adhered them to these uh, sheets using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to pull off all the colors that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to start with my sepia brown and color my tree trunk. And I always start with a very light application of color just to be on the safe side. And I have a tissue handy that, so that I can wipe off my brush if I either get too much water or too much color. So as you can see, my next application here is a lot darker. These watercolors are very, very intense and vibrant. Um, and so I'm gonna apply it more of a darker layer to the left side of this tree to give it a little bit more dimension. And I'll take that color and I'll pull it toward the right. So whenever I lay my brush down, I always lay it in the dark part of the uh, color to make sure that I don't get too much color in the lighter areas. You can always blend it out with a little bit more water. And the nice thing about these watercolors is that they do layer. So you can make uh, certain areas darker by just letting it dry for a minute and putting another layer of color on. All right, the next color I've got here is Myrtle Green. And I'm gonna do something really simple here. I'm just gonna kind of dot the green color into each one of these leaves. And I'm gonna skip over some of this because it's kind of boring. And I'll go right to the end here. All right, now I'm gonna get ready for my hill, my grassy hill. And I find that it really helps to have a pool of water on my craft mat to help control the amount of color that I'm putting on the, on the paper. So I'll dip my brush into the watercolor palette and then I'll kind of dip it into my water reserve here just to kind of see how much ink I have before I get it on my paper. So I noticed I wanted a little bit more. So I wiped off my brush with the tissue and I pulled a little bit more color. So I drew a line straight across and um, once I got my line across, then I took my uh, water brush and I pulled the color downward. So my darkest is gonna be at the top where I first applied my color. So I'm just gonna uh, keep doing this until I get the color that I want. And you'll see that I have quite a bit of water on the paper. And I like to have more water rather than less because um, if it's too dry, then it'll set and uh, it won't blend as well. Also notice that I started my, tr my um, hill above my trunk line and that way it didn't look like a completely flat plane. So it looks like the tree is sort of on the hill instead of laying at the top. Um, and now I'm going back with a little bit more of this darker color at the top and I'm gonna get lighter as I move toward the bottom so that you can sort of get a, a perception that the area in the back is further away and therefore darker. And you also see that I kind of dab the brush on the paper when I get more water. And so that kind of creates some pools of color and it adds a little kind of a nice texture to it. All right, now I'm going back in with a myrtle green, which is more of a, it's a lighter yellowy green. And I'm just gonna dab it in spots here and there. And I've been, when I use my Peerless watercolors, I tend to use um, two different colors in the same area just to give it a little bit of interest. So it's not all one solid color. So I'm just gonna make sure I get good, good coverage of this myrtle so it's evenly spread out across that mountain green, which is more of a bluish green. Now I'm going back again because um, I decided I wanted it to be a little darker on the top. 
And so as you can see, I'm sort of dabbing my brush there at the top. I didn't really want streaks because, you know, grass is, is not really evenly and even and consistent. It's kind of splotchy. So I want it to look a little realistic. Okay, I'm going to work on my sky now and I'm covering up the green with uh, just my stamp and Magic sheet and I'm going to spray my cardstock with water first before I apply my watercolor. Um, and what that's going to do, it's going to make sure that it's a very light application of color because I want my sky to be pretty light um, and that it'll blend really well and I won't get any streaks. Um, the nice thing about these watercolors also is that um, after they dry, so I let that tree dry with the leaves, after they dry the water is, I mean, I'm sorry, the watercolor is pretty well set into the paper. So I can put more water on top of it, I can put other colors on top of it, and it won't really affect the color that it's already been laid down and absorbed into the paper. Now I'm not going to say that it's perfect and that it doesn't, you know, bleed at all. It does bleed just a tiny bit, but I'm pretty careful with it and, and I don't think you can really notice it. But I am, de I am definitely working around the tree. I'm not doing a whole lot on top of the tree. And I'm going to have my sky be a little bit darker at the top and it'll get lighter as I get toward the grass. And then finally what I decided is I wanted to have a little bit of sunshine in there so I took my daffodil yellow and my thin aqua painter and I just put a little tiny bit of the yellow in the corner and I faded it out as I got toward the tree with more water. Alright so I'm going to clean this all up and I'm going to let it dry. Now when I come back I'm going to stamp the rest of the card. I've got my shadow which I'm going to use some VersaFine Black Onyx ink and I use this ink because I knew the textured paper um, would kind of made it make it a little faded and I wanted the, the the leaf part to be a little bit faded because I knew some sunshine would be getting in between the leaves so um, I stamped it and then I colored it in with a black marker the trunk because that was going to be solid. Alright the word sunshine I'm using Simon Says Stamp Black um, ink and I, and I knew that would kind of give me a really good crisp image and I used my stamp image because I knew I'd have to stamp it twice um, because the watercolor paper is a little textured and when I did that it kind of smudged a little bit but I don't think it's too noticeable. I kind of made peace with it and I think it's okay. <laughs> anyway, it's not as clear as I would have liked. Anyway, so um, yeah, I use some dimensionals, some foam adhesive and then as long as you take it off within the first few seconds, which I do a lot because I don't get it lined up exactly perfectly at first, um, it'll come off and then I just put that onto um, a card base that's four and a half by five and a quarter. I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half folded cardstock, and that's Nina Solar White. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the watercolor, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.